Hey everybody, this is Greg Gossett from Gossett Trading and Mentoring Live. And today is Friday, January 10th, 2020. And we again find ourselves in the final hour of the trading day and also the final hour of the trading week. So I mention this each day, but in my opinion, the most valid prices to make your buying and selling decisions from each day are the prices as close, are the prices that are as close to the close as possible during the day you have the day traders you have the algorithms battling it out i consider it just noise at the end of the day you have the large financial institutions you have the market makers come in they take over the market with their buying or selling and move the prices to what i think are the most valid prices right there at the close and so that's why i'm primarily an end of day trader making the majority of my buying and selling decisions right at the close so uh anyway we are having well i guess that we're red we're down across the board right now dow jones is down 100 point 108 points down 0.37 percent nasdaq's down 11 point seven down point one three and the s p is down five points uh down 0.18 percent so uh hope everyone is doing well today i appreciate you coming as always it's always nice to see you i look forward to chatting with everyone and i think we have a really good group and i really appreciate you being here and i hope that you're uh, you know by investing your time here with me i hope you're learning a few trading principles that are trading and investing principles that are helping you with your results so thank you so much for coming hey steve burns what is going on my friend good to see you always an honor to have you here always excited to have you here thank you so much and uh um listen thank you so much today for including me on your friday's uh uh investor and trading list i always appreciate that it's always so great being included in a list with so many great traders so thank you very much and speaking of great traders uh, Steve Burns, Beyond Meat is a nice green flower in a red market. Oh, that's a nice way to say it. That sounds like one of Frank's poems, the beginning of one of Frank's poems, right? Maybe he could use that. Uh, Steve has had an excellent day today. Uh, really uh, wonderful. It's great to have an up day on your positions, especially when the market's down. It adds a little extra uh uh, pleasure to it right Steve so yeah beyond meat is up huge for Steve today probably I would imagine your biggest trade of the year so far and KMX is working out well also so congratulations my friend um, earlier in the day I saw Etsy was up and of course the overnight spy trade was up so you have the trifecta uh, but I think Etsy's down a little bit at the moment but hey three out of four not too bad on a red day right so thank you so much for coming steve and we'll go over beyond meat and kmx here in a bit uh grant hey how you doing grant nice to see you my friend i appreciate you coming here i'm really glad you're part of the group and hope you're having a good day jt hey there's my friend jt how you doing sir nice to see you excellent mcdonald's trade you had the other day proud of you man that's a great trade so thank you so much for coming all right well uh plan for today as usual uh we're gonna go ahead and run the u.s legal disclaimer <clears throat> get that out of the way we're gonna come back we're gonna take a look at my current positions we're gonna talk about when i bought them why i bought them how i'm gonna manage them going forward then we're gonna spend a few minutes and go through some of the trades from people in the group that have been uh, nice enough to share their trades with us and i mark down their name i mark down when they bought it where they bought it so we'll take a look at those and uh uh, go through each one of those charts and see how see how they're doing and see what their plans are if they're in the group today. Uh, after that, we're going to do a few minutes on trader psychology. I know I beat you guys over the head with this, guys and girls, uh, but it's so important, everybody. It's the most important skill you can learn. You got to learn those technical skills, entries, exits, stops, all that kind of stuff. Yes, you have to learn that, but just because you know it and you've learned it all, are you following it? right are you following in that plan uh do you have the discipline to follow the plan or do you get in there and you're you're moving things around not really staying with the plan if that's the case you need to work on that whatever that takes whether that means trading smaller so there's not so much emotion in the trade so that will make it easier finding somebody an accountability buddy 
you guys are South Park fans, you'll remember that episode, but you need an accountability buddy. You need a risk manager, possibly. You need to tell somebody about your trades so they can uh, kind of oversee you and make sure you're following through. If, if, if you're responsible to someone, if you know someone knows your trades, I guarantee you it's gonna help you stick with your plan. Uh, I hired someone uh, in 2018 for the entire year and uh, it was great. I hired him as my risk manager. Of course, I know what I do. I know what I'm doing when I'm trading, but I'm smarting, smart enough to know that my biggest weakness is still me. And so I'm like, how can I overcome this weakness? Okay, I'll hire somebody. And what I did is I trained them. I trained them on a trade so that they knew uh, whether I was doing something right or wrong. You can't some, bring somebody in there and just they don't know anything about it because you can tell them anything. They go, oh, okay. Right. So I taught them exactly how I trade, what to look for, where I'm supposed to get out, <clears throat> all these things. Paid them a monthly fee every day. They they were on with me on Skype during the last hour, just like you you all are. Uh, but uh, he was my risk manager, and I'll tell you what you remember last uh, in 2018, the last quarter in 2018, the market literally collapsed. Well, that saved me a lot of money because I'll tell you what, my emotions were amplified. I was like, this is too low. This is too low. All the things you're not supposed to say, I said, and I'm sure a lot of other traders out there were thinking the same thing because it was the wild, wild west. So, uh, you know, if it takes hiring somebody if it, or just talking to your husband or wife or brother or sister, or boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, or just a friend, you know, if you're having issues with this, uh, you know, get them on board with you. I promise it will help. And if they're on board with you watching what you're doing and you have to follow your own rules, oh my gosh, can you imagine such a horrible thing having to follow your own rules that you've come up with, but you don't want to follow it, right? Um, but you will start to follow them. If they're looking over your shoulder, you will start to follow them. I promise. And then you'll get in the habit of doing it. And then you maybe won't need them anymore. Who knows? But uh, anyway, kind of got off topic there, but that's that's how important trader psychology is. After that, we're going to go uh, down through my watch list. We're going to take a look at each stock in my watch list. We're going to look at support levels, resistance levels. Um, and uh, I have three criteria, basically. It boils down to three criteria when I am looking to enter a stock position. First criteria, I need to see a confluence or a combination of indicators lining up. Uh, I need a combination of possibly support levels. I need a combination of resistance levels. I look at indicators such as MACD, RSI, moving averages, ATR channels. I look at these as potential groups of buyers, each one a potential group of buyers. And if you want a stock to go up, put yourself in a position to give you the best chance for to have a profitable trade, you need to be in, a, you need to be in with as many other buyers as possible, right? It makes sense. That's what makes it go up. So if I look at one indicator as a possible group of buyers, I look at another indicator as a possible group of buyers and another indicator as a possible group of buyers. If I can see a confluence or a combination of all those indicators lining up or another way to put it, all those different groups of buyers lining up, then it gives me a better chance to have a profitable trade. So I look, so step one, I look for a confluence or combination of indicators on one time frame, even two or three time frames is even better, right? Step number two, I have to make sure it offers me a good risk to reward, right? I can say I'm gonna buy something in 100 and sell it at 90 if I'm wrong, or I'm gonna sell it at 500 if I'm right. Well, that's a really good risk to reward ratio, but is it realistic? It's not very realistic, right? It has to be realistic in the context of the chart. So if, I if I'm uh, willing to lose $100 on a trade, I wanna make at least $200 on the trade, but my profit target has to be realistic, right? So, and then step number three, I wanna make sure that I have a good, I have good diversity among the uh, positions that I have. I don't want four tech stocks. I don't want five tobacco stocks. I don't even know if there are five tobacco stocks out there, right? But you get my point. I wanna have some diversity, some diversification among the type of stocks that I, that I own. Uh, I wanna spread it out so I don't have all my risk in one particular basket like tech or semiconductors or something like that, right? And then ideally, if you can get some other securities in there like gold or bonds or silver or oil, that's even better because they're even more not more non-correlated to stock. So three steps that I'm looking for. One, 
combination or a confluence of indicators lining up at the same time to make sure I have a good risk to reward ratio based upon the resistance above me and based upon the support below me. And number three, make sure that I have my positions are diversified. I'm not too heavy in any one sector. So I'll go through the list. If I find something at the end of the day, I will go ahead and purchase it before the market closes. After the market closes, if you have any questions for me, please let me know. If you need some clarification on anything I discussed here today, please let me know. Uh, if you'd like me to take a look at some stock symbols, if you'd like my opinion on those, I'm happy to break those down for you. And then if you see a particular stock symbol today before the market closes if you think it would be helpful for the group and you'd like my opinion on it before the market closes please go ahead put it in the chat put a star by it something like that so i know it's time sensitive um, and then i can try to get to it before the end of the day otherwise i'll uh, get to them after the market closes in the question and answer period okay sound good so that is the plan for today um I'm going to run the U.S. legal disclaimer and I will be back in about 40 seconds. So hang tight, please. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Please carefully read and or listen to the U.S. government required disclaimer before watching this video or live stream broadcast. The video link and disclaimer text are located in the description section of this video or live broadcast here and here. Thank you so much. All right. Steve says he is up almost 15% on Beyond. That's about what I figured. That's freaking awesome. It's way to go, Steve. That's fantastic. Shelton Johnson says, hi, Greg. Hi, Shelton. How you doing? Good to see you. JT says, I'm up 13% on Beyond Meat. Way to go, JT. That is great. Great, great, great. I hope that keeps going up for, for both Steve and for, uh, for JT. And I think Marco, hey, Marco, I was just thinking about Marco. I think Marco has Beyond Meat as well, right, Marco? Dr. Long, hey, good to see you. Nice, thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Frank, hey, Greg and group, a poem. Oh, you are setting a trend. You are setting a trend, and it's a great trend. Thank you so much for this here. Let me read this. Let me post this, or not post it, but let me put it in my little sticky note so I have that for later. Uh, there we go. I'm telling you, Frank, people like these poems. People like these poems, and uh, I can tell I get a lot of likes on Twitter. Let me read this. A trader must stay on track and always watch his back. Never a crier and never a boaster, for a trader knows he rides on a roller coaster. Wow, that's so good, Frank. Let's read it again. A trader must stay on track and always watch his back. Never a crier and never a boaster, for a trader knows he rides on a roller coaster. Wow, that is good stuff, buddy. Thank you so much for that. I really look forward to those each day. <laughs> So good. Hey, Christopher, good to see you. Nice to see you, my friend. Hey, uh, if you want to reach out to me on Twitter or email, I can hook you up with the, uh, the guy that contacted me that has the code for TrendSpider for V1s, v two. So if that's of interest, send me an email or send me a message on Twitter and I will uh, uh, give you his information. Grant, how you doing? Good to see you. Twitter is red. Verizon is green. Everything else lies in between. Uh-oh. We got a poem throwdown now <laughs> between Grant and Frank. Uh, sorry, Frank, I can't compete with you. Hey, that was still really good. Twitter is red, Verizon is green, everything else lies in between. Wow. Man, what is happening to this channel? We're turning into the poem channel, which is fantastic. This is great. A man solo. Hey, buddy, good to see you. Thank you for coming. Joshua, hi, Greg. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you, my friend. Frank says, not bad, Grant. It's catchy. I think they're both great. <laughs> uh, JT, more, more, more. 
Murat, hey Greg and all, finally nobody is tweeting nonsense. I was long in WTI crude this morning and chose and closed with profit before noon. After noon, I shorted and just closed it for a nice profit. Very nice, Murat. I'll tell you, there's, there's like a guilty pleasure if you go long, make money, and then, and then reverse and go short and make money. There's just something great about it, right? <laughs> Marco says, yes, I'm in Beyond Meat. Ah, good to hear. Great to hear. Steve says, that's another great one, Frank. So true. <laughs> uh, good. Message me, Chris. Alan says, hi, everyone. Good to see you. Good to see you. Frank says, thanks, Greg. Fun is good. It is good. Murat, I have a copy of Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, which also has a nice stock market related cartoon from those days. Apparently, it was quite popular in those days. So who knows? That's a good book, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. Hey, that's a good time to bring this up. So... I want to tell you about a great investment opportunity. <laughs> All right. I think this is one of the best investments you can make with your money. And it is if you go to my YouTube channel or you go to the description of this video, here's my recommended books on trading. Look, these books are not a lot of money. They're $10, $15, $20. And I'm telling you what, if you read them, and internalize and do what these books tell you, you're gonna make, I don't know, a 500% return, 100% return, 300, 10,000%, I don't know. But if you read it, if you read these books and implement what they teach you, it'll probably be one of the best investments you have. And I just wanna quickly go through them. Moving averages 101, incredible signals that will make you money in the stock market by your friend, Steve Burns. This is one of my favorite books. This has got me, this one. This book got me uh, introduced to Steve Burns and his teachings, and I'm really glad. I've read this book so many times, but I put a link here, Amazon link. I don't get uh, compensated or anything for this. I just put the link down there for convenience. But Moving Averages 101 by Steve Burns, I would highly recommend that. Number two, five moving average signals that beat buy and hold. This is also by Steve Burns. You know, if you're not really quite a trader, but you want to be a little bit more of a long-term investor that just beats buy and holding, I would really recommend this book. Uh, third book by Stephen Holly Burns, uh, buy signal, sell signal, strategic stock market entries and exit. Love this book as well. Uh, another one by Steve Burns, the ultimate trading risk management guide. You know, most books are about entries, exits, all psychology, all important stuff. But I, what I really like about this book is it really concentrates on the risk management, which is very important. Uh, this one, new, The New Trading for a Living by Dr. Alexander Elder. This is a fantastic book. I did study one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Elder. I have an autographed copy of that book. This is excellent book. Uh, it talks about uh, Dr. Alexander Elder's approach to trading, uh, which is mainly double tops, double bottoms, but bullish divergences bearish divergences market wizards of course this is a very famous book not a lot of how-to but just some good wisdom uh, by some of the best traders in the world uh, this is a must read and uh, this is for my friend dr claudio dem trading your trading your a game are feelings expensive yes they are actually Cla claudio uh, i met claudio through dr alexander elder he i believe he is the top psychiatrist at Harvard Medical School. So I've met him several times. This book is about psychology on trading and this is a great book as well. So anyway, that is what I recommend as an investment. If you got all these books, it'd probably be less than $100 and the wisdom in there. So that is, that is my one-time recommendation for an investment. Read these books. I mean, it's ridiculous that you can spend $10 or $15 on a book and make thousands of dollars, right? That is a good investment. Okay. Mur says, the poems may become popular. I'm telling you what, we might be onto something. Dr. Long says, I bought more VXX, sold some SP futures. VXX is lagging. I think I am early on VXX. I tried to buy more Walmart calls, but got another, but got nothing on low tech. I'm still long CL 6350 puts. Okay, good. Well, you know how, you know how the VIX is. It goes down. It never seems to go up, but when it goes up, it goes up in a hurry. And, uh, 
if you try to chase it, it's generally not a good idea. So sometimes maybe you have to preempt it, anticipate it. Man Solo, out of CMCS today, if you look back to October, today was reject of halfway of that big bar. Also rejection. Okay, so I will note that. Murat says, forget how much they can, forget how much they return. If they save one loss, it covers the cost of the books. Oh, totally. Well, I guess that's part and parcel of the investment, right? When you aggregate the wins and the losses. But yes, saving one loss helps helps your P&L regardless, right? Thanks, Greg, for the book mention. That's book books mention, Steve. <laughs> you notice that 75% of my books in there are from Steve. <laughs> uh dr long says i bought long-term puts on a n okay i will look at that in a sec Mert, i want to hear from a forex guy once he says we are in the business of eliminating losses that's true the beyond meat chart must look like the chart that butcher has with the part of the cow hmm my recommendation for investment is to sign up with greg and get coached by him <laughs> thanks man solo I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Matt Solo is a fantastic client. Let me tell you what, he really has a knack for this. And I mean, it shows with his trades. His trades have been unbelievable lately. Unbelievable. Clarence Beeks, AKA Jesse. How you doing, buddy? Uh, Jesse says, thought I knew better than all the rule setters. Ignored them all and went long. I'm a giant moron. Huh? Thought I knew better than all the rule setters. Ignore them all and went long. I'm a giant moron. Clarence Beak, circa 2020. Ah, oh, very nice. <laughs> Alan says, out of BA, first thing this morning after rejecting 50 RSI twice. Yeah, I remember. I didn't like that it rejected the 50. So, all right, let's take a look, see here. And go through my current positions before I run out of time. Uh, all right. Overnight spy trade. The world famous overnight spy trade. Not quite as famous as Frank's poems, but close second. So I do buy the spy every single day at the close. Right before the close or at the close. I sell it first thing the next morning. I do this every day, regardless of technicals regardless of price levels, and why would I do such a thing? Well, this is based upon a backtest study from Lizanne Saunders at Bespoke on Vest with this backtested study since 1993. Two options, first option, buy the SPY at the open each day, sell it at the close each day. So buy the open, sell the close, buy the open, sell the close. If you would have used this approach every day since 1993, you would have lost a negative 13.9% return, or you would have had a negative 13.9% return for all your troubles. However, if you did the opposite, which is what I do, and buy the SPY instead of the open and selling the close, you buy the SPY at the close and you sell the open. So just the opposite. opposite. If you'd have done this each day from 1993, you'd have returned a positive 634.2%. And by the way, that's only to January of 19. Now we're in January of 20, it's higher than that. I just don't quite know. I think it's about 15% higher than that. So that is what I do. I buy it every single day. I take a 10% position size. Uh, this chart shows the blue line is the buy in the afternoon, sell in the morning, has returned great, great gains. There's ups and downs, it's not straight up, but over the long term, it has, done very well the orange lines the buy in the morning sell in the afternoon not so hot tamale the gains come in the after hours in the pre-market session and when you really think about this all the gains all the gains in the s p since 1993 have come from people bidding it up in the after uh, after hour session and the pre-market sessions kind of wrap your head around that didn't come from the regular trading session so uh, anyway, I did buy the S&P uh, yesterday at the close at 326.65. I sold it this morning at 327.36. So uh, it was kind of a rough start uh, with the overnight spy trade because of the Iran conflict and all the, um, the worry associated with that. But the last two days have been nice. A couple days ago here, bought here at the, at the close, sold, the, sold at the open yesterday for a nice profit, bought yesterday at the close, sold uh, this morning for a nice profit. And you can see now we got the very, very top. So this is one of those situations where the, you know, it was bid up in the after hours or pre-market and we pretty much got the top, right? So I will be buying this again today, but nice trade. 
how are we doing on the market now? Yeah, so the market's still down over 100 points. Uh, all right, so I did buy Walmart back here at the on the 8th of January. I bought it when we went under the 30 intraday, closed above the 30 RSI at the end of the day. We tagged the negative third ATR channel, bounced off of it. Uh, so this is why I bought this position. If I was right, I have the potential for being right large. If I'm wrong, I'm very, I'm going to be wrong very small with the close back under 30. Yesterday, it moved up very nice for us, real strong. I mean, it bounced immediately where, where we bought it, bounced strong. I did hit two profit targets, uh, which is great. Took this profit target off here, or two, top, two profit targets off here. Today, not so hot. Today, it is down. But interesting, do you see the low of the day was right back where I bought it. So buyers, we came in here and they came in here again. So what am I gonna do with this? Well, yesterday it did move more than one ATR for my entry. Here was my entry. This orange line here is the one ATR away from my entry. Did it go above one ATR? Yes, it did. So it got outside of noise and today it came back. So I am in, I am in trailing stop mode. My trailing stop at this point, would be a close below the previous day's low or a close below 30, but it looks like close below the previous day's low would come first. So anyway, this is down a little bit today, but uh, uh, again, this is why I like to take profits because if this, you know, uh, goes down, you know, has a big down move and I have to get out, yeah, I'm going to lose money on the trade, but I'm not going to lose as much because I did take two profits up here at profitable levels so the market can't take that away from me and also if it does go down now i have fewer shares on the way down so it helps mitigate the loss uh last position i did take xlu which are ut the utility sector um we were above the one ATR channel. We came back into the value zone. We had some nice sideways movement. This is exactly what I'm looking for when I want to buy a return to value trade, but I needed a signal. Uh, the day before I bought it, I thought I was going to have a V2. Here's day one, day two, day three, day two washed out day one, but day three did not close above day one. So I really liked the setup here, but I didn't get the trigger, but I did get the trigger yesterday because the previous day's bar did paint the or, or the green triangle. And the reason it painted the triangle was the day before the triangle day, we had the high. The next day we went up above it and reverse below it. See the negative V1? So essentially, you're going to get a, a, a green triangle if you have a negative V1. So negative V1 is negative. It's bearish. But if you can have a bearish signal that the very next day reverses and becomes positive. So here we have a high. Next day, we go above that high, close below that high. It will paint a green bar if this setup happens. And then the next day, it goes above that day one. So I like the setup here. I didn't get my V2 trigger, but I did get the negative v1 that immediately reversed and so that was my trigger so i did buy it yesterday at 64.22 did hit one profit target today at 64.49 so anyway glad glad this one has moved up so not bad today two of three uh the orange line up here is the one atr away from my entry so as soon as if we get up to here then i will start trailing this stock uh, so that's it. That's it. Spy, nice overnight spy trade. Walmart, uh, reverse back on us today, but still holding. And then XLU, one profit target up there. Okay, now let's go through everyone else's trades. Mount Doji bought back here. Really nice trade closed above these moving averages here and this thing has been a monster from him So congratulations. I know he's on vacation, but I don't know if he's still in this trade I hope he is now because it's moving up so nicely. So nice nice going Mount Doji All right, so uh, a man solo uh, just recently told me there in the chat that he got out of this trade He bought this back here on the 19th of December. We had this v1 with the bounce off the 200 this has been a great trade, but uh, you know, it's obviously more than one ATR from his entry and it looks like today it's gonna close below the previous day's close. So uh, he already told me that he locked that in. So very nice trade, I'm on solo. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Let's see. All right, so we'll clear up some space on that. FedEx, 
Amant Solo also bought FedEx here, higher low V1. It's moved up nicely, moved up nicely. It is more than one ATR away from uh, one ATR away from entry. Uh, you know, if I, if I was in the trade and it closed below the previous day's low, that would be my signal to get out. But I'm not sure what uh, Man Solo's plan is. Um, but uh, let me know. But I have a feeling he's still in this trade. All right, Allen. Uh, it did reject the 50 day twice, so it looks like you're taking a small loss on it, but it's okay. Taking a small loss is fine. Taking a small loss is fine. So Boeing is out of there. KMX. Uh, I believe this is Allen, right? Yeah, Allen also bought KMX. And eh, good, he's back to even. Uh, because ba I believe Allen bought this back here on the second. This close above the five day it immediately went against him, but today it has moved up nicely. So it looks like you're back to even. So congratulations, but that's up a nice 2%. And Steve also bought that uh, with a, ooh, I can't remember now. Was it under 30, over 30, Steve? I think it was. Oh, no, no, it was uh, under the, over. Oh, on Steve's charts, which are a little bit different than mine, I think it was closing back above the third Keltner channel. But anyway, glad for Steve, glad for Alan. You had a nice day on this for sure. Uh, let's see, Bing He bought IRDM yesterday at 24.94 with this nice V2, sideways movement V2. It's down a little bit today. It's down 11 cents, but it looks like it's still holding uh, the uh, washout bar, which is positive. Um, Dr. Long bought some VIX back here, I believe on the 8th. So I think he just uh, dipped his toe in and bought a partial position here down a little bit there, but now VIX is up. So maybe things are turning around here. And then a man solo did buy IART back on the 8th of January, uh, had a V2. Uh, previous day, we went under the 200, over the 200, so good confluence of signals there. Moved up nicely yesterday, coming back a little bit today. And I think that's all we have. So if you guys have some new, if you have some new uh, positions, let me know. Okay. Uh... So listen, this is the time of the day that I do like to talk about trader psychology. There's some really great Facebook and Twitter accounts out there. Spend a lot of time and energy and burn a lot of calories and posting good things for us to read each day, good sayings, good, uh, good uh, trading words of wisdom. And of course, one of the best, my favorite, Steve Burns, right? I posted a Steve Burns ones yesterday because he has so many good ones. I'm like, hey, this is the best one. So anyway, this is from Steve Burns. This is on, uh, this is on Facebook. You can get him on Facebook at New Traders, Rich Traders, or you can get him on Twitter at, at S. Joseph Burns on Twitter. But look at this, guys. Profitable Trading 101. Here's the pyramid, right? 10% strategy. 30% money management and 60% psychology. When you started trading, do you think it would be like this or did you think 100% of it was strategy? I think most people do. People always talk about strategy, 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 but I rarely hear them talk about money management and psychology. And this is about right. 60% psychology, 100%, 100%, 60%, 30% money management right? And 10% strategy. Strategy is important, but it's not that important. You, you could just have a pretty decent trading approach, right? It doesn't have to be some top secret thing. It just be a good trading approach. But whether you can follow your rules is psychology and money management is important too, because no matter how good the trading approach is, if you are betting too large and you can run into, you know, a, 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 um, a drawdown, and it can destabilize you, all sorts of stuff. So think about this, guys. I mean, I talk about this every day and I talk about it because it's important. 60% of profitable trading comes from your psychology. 30% comes from money management and a small little 10% comes from strategy. So think about that. So, all right, Steve, thank you, my friend. Appreciate that. And I hope that was helpful. All right, how are we doing on time? All right, so Alan Bailey got out of Boeing. Glenn says, hi, PayPal 113 still holding above 112. 
Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So that one's going well for you, right, Glenn? Good, good. Greg, what is the name of your dog? My da my daughter is asking. She is still up. <laughs> my the name of my dog is Katie. Katie girl. Oh, Steve says Katie is Greg's dog. That's right. Clarence says, are there any think or swim users in here having problems with order fills, especially in the morning? Terrible lately. Ah. Dr. Long, risk pays, but must pick your spots. When players issue risk, you you want some. Your overnight is a prime example. That's exactly right. Buying at the end of the day, you're taking on the risk for overnight. You're buying from day traders in the day that don't want to take that risk overnight. You're buying that risk from them. And I think Tom Basso, Market Wizard, told Steve about this particular, or Steve was telling him about this particular trade. And he says, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, you're being paid to take overnight risk. Uh, and then, you know, they sell at the close. Nothing happens overnight. Then they buy it back in the morning, driving that up. So you're 100% right. Grant says, on XLU, are you concerned about the overhead resistance of 65? Yeah, but it's not it's not there yet. So when I take a trade, Grant, uh, I have my ultimate profit targets, my initial profit target, my ultimate profit target, but I do look for red flags that give me the ability to get out of the trade if, if, if I want to. Yes, I'm concerned about, you know, uh, this high up here right around 65. To give you an example of this, a perfect example, uh, when I bought Etsy, I got out on this day here because we, on this particular day here, we rejected that previous high. We had a V1 to the downside. You know, there were a lot of bearish things. There were red flags. It didn't get to my profit target, but because it rejected that previous high so strongly and had a V1 to the downside, I went ahead and got out, which was not a good idea, <laughs> was it? <laughs> then it went right up, but it's okay. You know, sometimes you see a red flag, you get out, and uh, you're really glad you did. And then other times uh, you get out and, uh, you know, it keeps going up, but that's all you can do. So, yes, so on XLU... I would be concerned if it, you know, that would be a red flag if we rejected that previous high. So, but it has, it's not there yet. So I'll just kind of deal with it as it comes. Glenn says, Greg, buying the SPY in an uptrade makes sense, but in a downtrend, why would you consider buying the SPY? Would you consider the inverse SPY in a downtrending market? No, so here's the thing, Glenn. Um, you know, I think Tom Basso also told Steve this, and I have read this many times, but in downtrends, the S&P, there's a trend in the S&P in a downtrend that it opens higher and closes lower in a bear market, right? If you're in a bear market, so you're in a downtrend in the S&P, lots of times it will open higher and then close lower, open higher, close lower, which the overnight spy trade is good. A lot of times in uptrends, where you think it would be the right time to do it in bull markets you open lower and close higher which in that case you would lose overnight you see what i'm saying so just because it's in a downtrend does not mean it's not a good approach to have because downtrends often open higher and close lower man solo says fedex yes close below previous day's low is my signal all right oh, we're getting pretty close there right uh, Steve says, yes, KMX was break over the third deviation Keltner channel. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Dr. Long, I am up to 50% of a position, bought 1405s today in the VIX. Oh, good. Well, that's good because it's at 1418. So nice going. Merit says, I am long in one of the most shorted stocks in Oslo. They signed a huge contract today. The squeeze already. Yeah. Well, it's nice. You know, when I, when I, studied with Dr. Alexander Elder, one of, one of his criteria when he looks to go long a stock is to see what the short position is. And if there's a high short position, that's when he likes to take the positions because obviously a lot of shorts means you have built-in buyers, right? Uh, Steve said, oh, excellent pyramid, Steve. So true. That is true. Dr. Long says, I just covered 114th of mess position. Frank says, after reading Steve's pyramid, it gives new meaning to the word stock analyst. 
After reading Steve's Pyramid, it gives new meaning to the word stock analyst. Hmm. I must be slow today because I don't get it. <laughs> Josh, hey, Josh, how you doing? Nice to see you. Thank you for coming. Just seems like market continues to go up with no foundation, market profile, Iran tensions, and impeachment. Hard to think this continues up for too long. I'm with you, Josh. I feel the same way, but, um, you know, it's fine to have an opinion, but just make sure that you're trading your signals instead of your opinion, because I've been bearish for months, <laughs> right? If I'd have been shorting, look where, you know, I wouldn't have done so hot. So I have been bearish for this, you know, a lot of the reasons Josh just said, but again, like Frank says, my opinion is none of my business when it comes to trading, right, Frank? All right, so we're running a little slow, little short of time. So listen, I'm gonna go through these charts. I'm gonna go through them pretty quick. Um, if there's something that looks interesting, I'll take I'll take a little bit more time. Uh, but I am gonna go through them, through them pretty quick. Uh, Apple. Uh, up nine cents today, which is pretty good on a day when we're down 150 points. Uh, but I need to pull back into the value zone. The value zones between this green line, and this is green line. This is the one ATR and the negative one ATR. So we'll pull back into value is what I'm looking for. So I don't see any positions in Apple in the near future. Adobe got rejected at the third ATR channel. I need to pull back into value. Amazon down quite a bit today. Looks like we're gonna close below the previous day's low. Uh, I would love to buy Amazon back here in the value zone between the two green lines at the 200 day moving average. This is really where I'm looking. I did have a nice trade on Amazon back here. Previous day it closed under the 250. On the day that I bought it, it closed over the 250. It did hold the 250 as support like it's supposed to, and then had a great, nice big trade up here, ran out of shares, got out here. Uh, Boeing down today, darn it. Uh, I'd like to, you know, where I think the sweet spot on Boeing is if we could come down here and we could test this previous low down here. If we did, we would have a double bottom with the bullish divergence. I can already tell, and we would probably be, be near a 30 RSI. So right in this location, not now, but in the future, this is what I believe is the sweet spot. And this is where I'd be looking to buy Boeing. Berkshire Hathaway, uh, we've made the higher high yesterday, come back in the value zone, need some sideways movement of V1, V2. Look at Beyond Meat, everybody. <laughs> so Steve took the trade here when we had the 520 EMA crossover. I couldn't take the trade because my filters don't allow me to buy this high. The next day, it went up and closed back below, and I was like, ooh, if it gets to the halfway of yesterday's bar, I am going to get in because that will give me a little better risk to reward ratio, but I was patient and unfortunately I was patient, but it's okay. I followed my rules. That's how it's supposed to go. If it would have got down into here and held, I would have bought it, but it didn't and it took off without me. So listen, if you have rules for yourself, following your rules, sometimes you're going to have regret not following your rules. You're going to have regret. I mean, let's say I bought it here against my rules and it went crashing down. Then I'd be mad at myself for breaking my rules. I didn't buy it here because it didn't it, it didn't meet my requirements for my rules. And then it left off without me. And then I'm bummed about that. <laughs> so you're gonna be bummed in trading for following your rules or breaking your rules. That's just how it is. But you will get some and you don't need that many each year to have a, a good year. So congratulations to Marco, JT, Steve on this great trade. We're at 72.38 RSI. This makes it really easy to manage. You hang into that baby as long as it's over 70 RSI. And if it closes below, you just lock in profit. So congratulations, guys. And everyone, anyone else that had that Caterpillar, uh, we are, we made a high. We came down in the value zone. We made a lower low. Now I need to wash out this low and have some sideways movement, V1, V2, so nothing there. Dow Jones, big reversal today. Look for a pullback into value. Walt Disney, nothing quite there. I would be interested to see how this reacts around the 50-day, uh, upward sloping 50-day uh, uh, moving average. If we, could, uh, if we could have a nice V1, V2 and a rejection of that 50-day moving average, I might be interested in buying that there. If you remember, we had this huge bar back up here. 
this should hold 50% on the way back down. So right maybe in here. So nothing on Disney. We'll just have to see how it goes. Etsy, uh, of course, we talked about that. Uh, I got out here. Literally, I can't remember where I got in. I know I got in this trade. I'm trying to remember why I got in. I know I was in it. Huh. Anyway, <laughs> kind of... I don't know I don't know what's happening I don't know why I can't remember on that trade but anyway nothing for me here today pull back into value is what I would be looking for Facebook really strong need to pull back into value gold catching a little bit up here so people did buy the dip but it's the dip came but it's still too high for me to buy I need to pull back into value or five EMA to cross under the 20 Google up again today look at this monster move way too extended i need to pull back goldman sachs way too extended above the third atr channel or keltner channel right back down here into the value zone would be excellent because here you have the support of this previous high that should act as some support 20 day moving average that should act as some support and being in the value zone by itself should act as some support so pull back into here is what i'd be looking for home depot strong uh need to pull back into value ibb uh, i was considering buying ibb yesterday when we had the five ema cross over the 20 but i did not buy it because when i looked at the weekly time frame it was right at the third atr channel so too high for me to buy looks like so far that was a good idea to let that one go intel nothing quite here big v1 to the downside look at this Russell 2000 has not been as strong as the other indexes. We've made a lower high now, uh, so nothing on that today. Johnson & Johnson, nothing on that. CarMax doing great today for Alan and for Steve. Very, very nice, guys. Uh, Alan, you know, you might want to might want to see how it reacts around the 50 RSI. Uh, Coke, big day, big day. Uh, bearish kangaroo tail as Dr. Alexander would say Lockheed Martin look at this pennant that's forming up here this higher range pennant that could really explode to the upside or it could explode to the downside MasterCard nothing there need a pullback McDonald's JT had a great trade on this got out of there yesterday I believe so that seems good fantastic trade JT Merck uh, we were above the value zone dropped below the value zone now I needed to come back into the value zone with a couple days down look for that higher low v1 v2 how am I doing on time all right Microsoft big bar to the downside look at that look at that v1 to the downside rejection of the third ATR channel rejection of the 70 RSI a lot of negative things there Netflix uh, down pretty substantially today. I would be interested if it could, now it's back in the value zone, if it could start to move sideways, cease going down, find some support of that 20 and that 200 day moving average. Oh, look, we had a, we had a 2200 crossover. That's a decent crossover too. So I, it's in the value zone. I'd like to see it move sideways, like to see it hold the support of the 200, give myself a good risk reward ratio, not there. Uh, Nike uh, down coming finally into the value zone so if we can get some sideways movement that would be interesting philip morris big day down today big day down looks like a bearish engulfing candle paypal up today on a up today on a uh, down day so that's good let's see who had that uh blah, 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 blah. was it ben let's see glenn yeah glenn had that so nice i'm glad that's up for you today on a down day uh cues uh, reversal nothing there silver at like gold it did buy it it did bounce today but it's too high for me to buy the bounce I needed to come back into the value zone I needed the 5 EMA to cross under the 20 EMA and then back over similar to here we took this trade here when the 5 EMA crossed over the 20 EMA and it happened right in the value zone that's the sweet spot to buy it, it gives you the e easiest move and look at this great trade we had all the way up to there s p had that nice overnight spy trade be scooping that up at the end of the day bonds uh are rallying so you know looks like some money may be coming out of the stock market and going into risk off assets like like bonds and gold uh, but nothing there for me today tesla down a little bit today giving the shorts a little bit of relief after i mean look how i mean you know things looked high but 
high can go higher, right? Twitter. Twitter is down today. Did make a new high. I'd like to see a pullback into value. United Healthcare Group. Mm, nothing there. Oil. Looks like it has caught a bid a little bit, or not a, well, I guess a bid, but it stopped going down here near the 50-day moving average, so nothing there. VIX rallying up today for Dr. Long, so Dr. Long picked some up earlier today, nice. Verizon, nothing quite there. I would be looking for a 30 RSI. Walmart, we have still profitable on the trade did bounce right where basically right where we bought it took a couple profit targets off so i am going to be holding walmart here unless we lose the 30 or under the previous day's low energy select nothing quite there financials really nothing there we've made a lower high i would need to wash out this previous low real estate catching a bid today but nothing there how's our utility doing well, up on the day, so we need to be thankful for that. One profit target has not gone above one ATR above my entry, so no trailing stop yet. And uh, healthcare. Well, look at this, guys. I mean, this is quite an example of a double top rejection. See the previous high? See the previous high? I do you want to point out the previous high? Look how high the RSI was. We were over the third ATR channel. Now, earlier, we had tested that high. Look at where the RSI is here compared to here. This is a, even though we're at the same price, bearish RSI divergence, uh, ATR divergence. We're here at three and a half ATRs. Here, we're at the same level. We were only not even one and a half, right? And we have a false breakout to the upside. So anyway, Nothing there, but uh, that is a, that does look pretty bearish. So, guys, I don't see anything today. I know I have not had a lot of positions lately, but, uh, you know, I'm just sticking with my rules, trying to be conservative here. Um, so don't have a lot of positions, but uh, um, I will buy the SPY at the end of the day. Walmart, I do have, and then XLU uh, is up today. So let me take a look here. All right, so am I covered for what I need to do today? Let's take a look. Yes, I believe so. So Walmart's fine, XLU's fine, buying SPY at the end of the day. Am I okay on that? Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. Christopher says, that's a bit like the Tesla position with the shorts. Yes, that is true. Marissa says, I guess in a downtrend, big boys want to unload their stocks early Mormon to retail traders. And the excitement dies towards the end of the sessions. That's 100% right, Murat. 100% right. Frank says, analyst is also a psychologist. Oh, all right. I got you now. Sorry, Frank. Thanks for getting me up to speed. <laughs> I didn't get that. Darn it. Now I feel bad I didn't get that because that was clever. Just play the chart. You're right, Josh. It's fine to have opinions. It's fine to have opinions. I've been bearish on this market for a long time. Was I right? Absolutely not. But at least I didn't express my opinions in trades. I only expressed my opinions with what was going on. And of course, if the market goes crashing down, you're going to go, dang it. I knew I had to blah, blah, blah. I should have shorted. I know. I know it happens to all of us. Dr. Long says, mess is uh, a mini S&P. Oh, okay. You know, when I used to trade free futures, we didn't have mini S&Ps. You bought one contract, futures contract of the SPY, and you liked it. And it was expensive. I think it was like 100 grand to buy one contract. No, no, no. 20 grand. 20 grand. Moo looks like ready for pullback off the highs. Oh, Micron. I haven't looked at a Micron chart forever. Yeah, we have a double top with the bearish divergence. Here's, a, here's the high. Look how high the MACD bars are. We pull back. We go red. We make a higher high. See how 
uh, uh, short the MACD bars are compared to here. Very high here, very short here. This means that this previous rally here uh, uh, from a MACD perspective had less momentum. And the, the takeaway with this is if you have a double top with a bearish divergence and you have less momentum on that last move up, there's a good chance, uh, you know, the Im implication is that, you know, maybe you're going to go be going down. Because if you lose momentum, if you throw a ball up in the air, obviously, as it gets higher and higher, it loses momentum and then it comes down. Joshua said, you should never regret following your rules, or your trading plan. 100%. You should never regret it. But of course you do, right? I mean, in the moment, you're like, why did I get out of that? Oh, yeah, my rule told me to. But still, why did I get out? Or um, why didn't, you know, um, why did I get in? Well, my rules told me to get in, and then it went again. It's okay, but you're 100% hundred percent right, Josh. You should never regret. You know, she should take some solace, take some comfort in that you followed your rules. People, very few people can do it. So pat yourself on the back for following your rules, regardless of what happened. JT said, yes, I did get out of micro, or, uh, McDonald's. Yes, I remember that. Great trade, JT. Glenn says, Amazon is losing to Microsoft with Azure getting better orders than AWS could explain the pullback in Amazon. Yeah, they lost that contract and who, you know, who else, who knows what else is going on with, with Amazon and why it's, why it's pulling back, you know, metals went up today. Yes, they did. They did for sure. Bing, he, Hey buddy, what's going on? Bing, he's our friend from Singapore. Clarence says, I think I missed it, but what was the entry on KMX? Was it a V2? And I think Steve said a break over the third. So Steve's charts are a little bit different than mine. His Keltner ch channels, I think, are set up a little different of, different than mine. I'm not sure when he got in. I think it was here, Steve. I'm not 100% sure. Was it on the second or on the first? Somewhere around that that you got in. So his charts were set up a little bit different than mine, Jesse. Um, uh, here would have been another place to get in here on the 7th when we did have this V2 and this false breakout to the downside. See how we have the, the low and then we just barely poke our head up and then right back in. Those are my favorites. When you make a low, you poke your head back down real quick and go up. If you make a low and then you go down and then down, 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 and then you come back up. Well, now a lot of that move is gone. So uh, I think Steve got in on the 31st or the 1st, somewhere back in here, because his charts are set up a little bit different. Josh says, yeah, can't have hindsight regret in this game. We'll eat up all the emotional capital. You are 100% right. We have capital and we have emotional capital. And you need to conserve both of them. That's why I always say, put yourself in a position where you will not become destabilized right? Have a good risk reward ratio, position size correctly. This is all about keeping yourself stable and not going off the reservation and making a really dumb trade, right? December 31st, that's what I thought. Back here. So on Steve's, Steve's Keltner channel, his are down a little bit more. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure why. Maybe his are EMA. I think mine's are S, SMA. Uh, maybe that's the reason, but it, it went under, it rejected the 30 I'm not sure if it went under and back over or if it just rejected the third ATR channel. Okay, so let's see where we're at. Okay, we have one minute for this fun game. All right, so I'm just buying the spy. That's pretty much it. Okay, there's that. And what do we have? We have, oh, we have 20 seconds. All right. Three, two, one. That's it. All right. So.
so I bought the spy at 325.71. Okie doke. So new spy entry. Is three twenty five seventy one. All right, so that's the new spy entry. Walmart still hanging in there, close below previous day's low. I will get out of Walmart. And XLU was nice enough to go up force today and hit one profit target. So, not a lot of positions, uh, not a lot of excitement, but that's fine because right now, just you know, based the way that I trade, I just don't have good risk to reward. So, I'm just waiting for pullbacks. So I'm going to get to the rest of the comments and questions. If you'd like me to take a look at anything, please let me know. Before I do, I just quickly want to put in my daily little plug. Hope it's okay with you, but I do want to let everybody know that I do offer private one-on-one -on -one coaching, teaching, and mentoring lessons in the evening time via Skype. I love to teach. I've had great success with my clients. Um, uh, I have a course. It's five sessions. Each session is between two and three hours. It's one-on-one, -on -one, just you and I on Skype. And I teach you everything I've learned over the last 24 years. Um, I teach you everything I've learned from all of my mentors and teachers and everything I develop on my own. It's an intensive course. There's a lot of back and forth. Uh, generally, each session, the first part I teach, the second session I have you teach it back to me. We do tons of chart study. I make you break down the chart. You know, what looks good here? What's bad? What's something to consider? What's the risk to reward ratio? What's your next trade? And we just go through hundreds of days of charts. We just go day by day, chart, chart. What are you going to do here? Are you going to buy here? Are you going to sell here? Um, so I think it's helpful. Um, you know, if you're interested, please reach out. Uh, I do uh, offer a 30 minute free Skype call, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever it takes. I just want to get to know you better. I want to understand about your trading history, what your challenges are, what your goals are. And, uh, and then of course you can interview me however you like. And if, you know, we decide that we're a fit for each other, uh, then we can go ahead and schedule the lessons. But if you're interested in, in having that free Skype call with me, uh, my email is in the description of this video. And also you can reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, just send me a message and say, Hey, I want to have that Skype call. Uh, and of course, you know, there's no obligation on the Skype call. If you don't want to take the lessons, that's fine, right? I just want somebody that really wants to learn, really is into it, right? And uh, so um, there's no obligation whatsoever. We have to make sure we're a good fit. And then uh, if you like today's uh, podcast, if you like the live stream, you know, I would appreciate it if you would hit the thumbs up button. It really does help promote the channel and get the channel out to more people. There's a lot of people out there that need help with trading that could you know, use some good trading principles and see those trading principles expressed every day like we do here. So um, if you could, I really would appreciate it if you could hit the thumbs up button uh, before you leave, uh, if you found it valuable. Um, let's see. Murat says, trading futures in Europe much easier. I trade CFD, which is contract for difference. This is forbidden in the USA after the Dodd-Frank Act. Oh, interesting. I had no idea. Uh, st st uh, Jesse says, okay, Greg, and uh, at new trader. Uh, Steve says, hindsight is a parasite in trading. Uh oh, sounds like a poem, Steve. Sounds like the beginning of a poem, <laughs> but it's true. Hindsight is a parasite in trading. I mean, it's it's normal, it's human behavior, it's natural to look back, right? But again, if you break your rules, there are gonna be times where you regret it. If you follow your rules, there's gonna be times where you regret it. It's just part of trading. Just get used to it, just you know, transcend it. Uh, but you will get good trades, right? You may not get them all, of course you're not gonna get them all. But uh, just understand you're not gonna get every trade, you're gonna break your rules, and take a trade and it's gonna go against you and you're not gonna be happy about that. Um, and then you're not gonna take a trade because your rules told you not to and it's gonna go skyrocketing up like Beyond Meat. <laughs> and that's just how it goes, right? If you, if you can't deal with that, you can't be a trader. Frank says, the poem, the poem the other day talked about rules as good as a ball and chain. I remember that one, that was a good one. Josh says, thanks for all your help, Greg. Love listening to your interviews and vids. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate that, my friend. 
Grant, do you buy the same value of SPY every day? I do. I do. Uh, you know, Steve mentioned this on his video newsletter at NewTraderU.com, but uh, it looks like he's using the same approach. Like at the beginning of the year, uh, you know, he's going to he's gonna say, okay, this is my, this is my account. Uh, I'm going to take 10% of this and I'm going to buy the SPY. Now, you could change it up every single day where maybe one day you're buying 200 shares and the next day you're buying 199 and the next day you're buying 202, but I'm just flat rate. I'm using the same amount every day. At the end of next year, then I'll probably recalibrate from there. Being he said, bought a CCO at the last minute. Oh, it's the last minute trade. Let's take a look. ACCO at 882. All right. Bing, he's in the money already. 882. All right. So that's the trade. Let's look. Let's look at the setup. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's about putting yourself in a position for a good risk to reward. I mean, what, what happened here? Did we have a V2? Close 84. Didn't quite have a V2, but we had a nice rejection of the negative third ATR channel or Keltner channel. And uh, yesterday we closed below the 200, now back above. Does this mean it's going to go up? 100% not. It doesn't mean it's going to go up. But does it put being he in a good position, in a good risk to reward position? It does. If we lose the 200 by the end of the day, most likely he'll get out. I hope he gets out, right? And he'll have a small loss, but he has potential for a rebound, maybe some more up to here. So it's a good risk to reward ratio based upon a support level, a valid support level underneath, which is the 200. Let's look at the weekly. Weekly held support at the 50 week moving average. I like that. Let's look at the monthly. Uh, well, it's kind of moving sideways here, but you know, I like the weekly. It did reject the 50 week moving average. And on the daily, it did reject the 200. So, you know, it, it looks good, not just on the daily, but on the weekly time frame. It's important to look at multiple time frames when trading. All right, good job, Bing He. We'll be rooting for you on that one to go up. Christopher says, Greg, I have emailed you my contact details. Okay, great. Great, great, great. I'm going to send you... Uh, a couple a couple pictures that he sent me. I believe it has the code. One of the pictures that I am going to send has the code for TrendSpider for the V1s, V2s. But he also said it's fine if you know to contact him by email if you'd like to discuss it in in details. Really nice of him to do that. Uh, thank you for doing that, and hope that works out for you, Christopher. Keep in mind though, it's imp you know there's a lot of V1s and V2s. You can't take them all. They have to be in the right context just because, you know, I can look and find V1s, V2s all day long. Here's a V1, right? Would I have taken it? No. Day The day one is too large before it, right? So there's V1s, V2s happen all the time, but it doesn't mean they're, they all work out. So they have to be in the right context. Christopher says, have a good weekend. All I catch the rest, all I catch the rest on replay. Okay. Uh, Jesse says, Greg, when are you auditing your watch list? When does a stock get pitched or added for you? Loss of volatility stuck in a range? That's a good idea. Or that's a good point, Jess. Um, you know, just occasionally I will go down through my watch list and say, uh, you know, this one hasn't performed very well. Um, maybe I have some redundancy in the watch list. Maybe I'll get rid of one. I mean, I, I, I'd like to narrow this down a little bit further as well, but you know, I don't change them out very often. I think maybe like once a month I'll take something out, but I don't have any real criteria. I just try to have a nice mix and representation of all the different, uh, uh, industries in, in the market and leaders, right? So variety of leaders in different areas in the market. But every once in a while, I remember I had GE. I got rid of GE. There was, I think I had the dollar chart in there. I got rid of that one. Um, so no real method to the madness other than if I look at something and go, you know what? I haven't had a trade on this in, in six months or a year. I'll just get rid of it.
Dr. Long says, I am buying from the players that don't want the risk over the weekend. Same as your overnight trade. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. So we're taking on the risk over the weekend if something happens, right? And if nothing happens, I would imagine that we would probably have, uh, you know, a rebound on Monday. Maybe. I don't, you know, obviously I don't know for sure, but. All right. So a slightly red day today, even though had two winners and one loser, had the nice overnight spy trade, which was positive, had the XLU trade, which was positive, but the one that we had negative was down more. So slightly, slightly down on the day, but not bad. Remember in trading, it's okay to have big wins. It's okay to have small wins. It's okay to have break even days. You just can't have and, and, and small losses are fine too. You just can't have big losses. And that goes each day, big wins, small wins, break evens, small losses. Same with weeks. It's okay to have big weeks, small weeks, break even weeks, small loss weeks, right? So, um, you know, this week, this week turned out fine. This day was a little bit of a, a loser, but you know, of course that's how it goes. Listen, we might, you know, we might be going into a situation where the market goes down for two or three weeks or a month. I mean, it happens, right? We've been so, you know, conditioned that the, lately that the market goes up, 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 and it has, and it's great, right? But it's not always going to be like that. So I guess my advice is, you know, possibly get yourself mentally prepared for a drawdown. We haven't had one for a while. Jesse says, thanks, Greg. Have a, have a great weekend, everyone. You too, Jesse. Thanks so much. Be careful uh, out there with your job. Appreciate everything that you do, my friend. Grant says, I assume one could execute the SPY system using call options. I guess, you know, Grant, we've talked about that. Um, I think we discussed that with Steve, but I think that, that the time decay would work against you. Uh, because, you know, if you're using if options, if you're buying call options, of course, you know, you have the theta decay, you have the time decay, which <clears throat> would certainly go against you. Whether or not it would totally wipe out the gains, I don't know, but I haven't seen a back test using options. Dr. Long says, when I say I am selling to buy, when I say I am selling to buy stops, I look for where buy stops would be. I put my offers there. Oh, okay, that makes sense. <clears throat> Mansola says, Greg, can you go back to your XLU trade where the V2 never formed, but the next day's price action got you in? Yeah. Yeah, I know this one. I know this one's kind of a tough one. But in the large context of this, I liked it because we were above the 180R channel. We did make a lower high. And if we make a lower high, we have to wash out that low, right? Well, it did wash out the low. It did move sideways. I wanted to buy the V. I mean, so we're, we've washed out the low. We've moved sideways inside the value zone. We had the spike down. And then the next day we didn't quite form the V2. So it was not a valid V2. So I did not take it, but I liked in the bigger context, I liked the move into the value zone in the sideways movement. So because I didn't get this trade, I took the next day's trade because see the triangle. And again, here is day one, day two here goes above that previous day and closes below, right? So that's a bearish V1 to the downside, right? But if you have a bearish V1 to the downside, but the very next day takes out the high of that first day. So here's day one, day two washes out day one's high, closes below, that's a V1 to the downside. But then if the next day can close above that day one, so you've had a bearish negative one to the downside, then immediately got reversed. And so that's why I took, that was my trigger. 
I, I didn't get a V2 trigger, but this formation here gave me the trigger. Does that, does that make sense, I'm on solo? What exactly in the fourth day needs to happen to trigger a green triangle? So a green triangle essentially means if you have a V1 to the downside, see the V1 to the downside? Here's, here's the high, the next day goes higher than that the previous day and closes under, previous day's close. That's a V1 to the downside. So the trigger would be the next day going up. So we have a V1 to the downside, but the next day goes up. So the criteria for the trade is day one, day two, day two washes out day one, closes under day one, but then day three closes above day one's close. So we have a bearish V1 that immediately gets rejected. That is the trigger. Uh, Dr. Long says, where would the 30 be in VIX? Yeah, good to... Good to see that because that is what I am looking for as well. Oh, Dr. Long, where where did you where did you get in today on the VIX? I'll put you down for that for your second entry. Okay, so Monday, the 30 RSI, this is for Monday, would be right about just slightly under this one right here right about 1350 which is you know halfway between 13 and 14 you know it most likely not for sure, but there's a good chance it will find some support there as well. But this works out well. I mean, this works out at a 30 RSI and a third ATR confluence right here. So 1350 to me would be the sweet spot. Marco says, "Have a great weekend, all. You too, buddy. Congratulations on your on your beyond <clears throat> excuse me on your Beyond Meat trade, Marco. Really proud of you, my friend." Bing, he says, C A R A. went up today should have kept it instead of selling well there goes that you know there's that regret thing we were talking about right but let's take a look bing he mm -hmm. well i think we talked about that yesterday i mean yes it was negative that it rejected the 10 day uh, but it still did make a higher high, made a higher low, didn't have any reversals, but it's fine. I mean, sometimes you 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 didn't like that it rejected the 10 day. You take it off and it goes down. You look like a genius. Other times you're like, why did it get out? But um, yeah, in hindsight, plus we had a MACD crossover today as well. Dr. Long said decay would ruin overnight. Yeah, that's what I thought, Doc. That's what I thought. I think the decay would hurt it. Uh, Glenn says January 15th is a perspective date for the signing of the phase one trade agreement between the US and China. It would seem to be logical for SPY or SBX to end its uptrend from 58, 28, 56. Yeah, it might be a, you know, it might, we might just be going up into it and it's a buy the rumor, sell the facts situation. Who knows, right? Dr. Long says, a buy spy sell call overnight would probably beat the overnight trade. Yeah, because you're selling the call, you're you're getting the premium. That's a good point, Dr. Long. Compared to buying it, buying the call and losing the premium. Mansell says, okay, so day four low doesn't need to be lower than day three low. Day Four low. Well, actually, it, it it doesn't have to. It does not have to include four days. I don't want to make this complicated, but essentially, if you have a V1 to the downside, that day three. Let's just concentrate on three days instead of four, because yes, this was a missed 
V2, but it doesn't matter in the context of just this particular uh, triangle. Let's just concentrate on the three days. You get one day, this is day one, day two goes above day one, closes below day one, that's a, that's a V1 to the downside. If the next day goes over day one's high, then it will pay a triangle. So you wrote day, day four does not need to be lower than day, th day three low. It wouldn't matter. No, it does not. It does not have to be lower at all. The only thing that matters is that you have day one. Day two goes above day one, closes below, essentially a V1 to the downside. Then day three goes above day one's close. And again, you can get these triangles at all sorts of different areas, right? Let's see if I can find another one. Yeah, so this one, look here, this this is just a random one, Amon Solo. Here's day one. Day two goes above day one and closes below day one. But then day three went above day one's close. Better if it closes above, but that's why it did paint the triangle. Day one, day two goes above day one, closes below day one. It's a V1 to the downside. Then it will paint a green triangle if day three goes above day one's close, right? I would not have bought this one here uh, because one, the context, I mean, it wasn't in the value zone. It wasn't moving sideways. So you can have just like V1s, you can have them all over the place, but it doesn't mean you can take each one. They have to be good setups. These uh, green triangles happen all over too. doesn't mean that you should take each one, but this one I took because I like the context of the chart. Fourteen oh five. All right. So Doc Long bought bought fourteen seventy one, and then he also bought at fourteen oh five. So he's scaling in here. He's dipping his toe in at different levels. All right, and you're up on that one, so that's good. And like. You know, like you asked before, where's the 30 RSI? 30 RSI on Monday will be at 1350. So that's still a ways down there. Dr. Long says it could look, looks like it could trade to 13. It certainly could. It certainly could. You know, that VIX is a wild one. Being he says, can the XLU trade be another pattern? Can the XLU trade be another pattern with the bearish V1? rejected maybe call it a v3 ah i see i see you know i have had discussions about this being he um do you see how day three was inside of day one and day, the high of day one and the low of day two. So essentially an inside bar. I have had people make the argument to me that even if your V2 does not trigger, if it's inside of day one's high and day two's low, that it's an inside bar. And some people consider inside bars like it never happened. So if you just melt this bar into this bar and this bar, then this makes it a V2 or like you said, a V3. Um, you know, I've done a lot of chart study looking at that exact scenario and it seems pretty good still, actually. So yes, in this case, see, if you took day three and blended into day one and day two, see how it's lower than day one's high and it's higher, uh, or it's the high is lower than day one's high and the low is higher than day two's low. So if you just blend this in, essentially an inside bar day is a bar day that didn't make any difference high or low. So yes, then this would become the day three. Wow. I'm impressed being he, I'm impressed. I've had long discussions and study about this particular thing. I didn't want to bring it up because it seemed confusing, but yeah, very good. And you're right. That's 
be a V3. Dr. Long, for me, the RSI is at 1349, almost the same as Greg. Okay. Yep, good. Great minds think alike, Amon Solo. <laughs> JT says, thanks, Greg. Have a nice weekend. You too, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Hope to see you next week. Dr. Long says, sell stops below 1350. We'll bid 1325 to 1340. Ah, uh, that sounds about right if we break that. Amand Solo says, got it. So I should think of this as a bullish one, a, a bullish V1 reversal, not an extended V2. I should think of this as a bullish V1 reversal. Yes, exactly. Think of it as a bullish V1 reversal. Here's a V1 to the downside that got reversed. But it makes sense, right? Amand Solo, if you have something that's really bearish that triggers, but then it immediately goes the other way, that's a bullish sign. If you have something that's very bearish, which immediately gets turned around bullish, that's a good sign. If you have something that's bullish that immediately gets turned around and goes bearish, that's a bad sign. If you have a great setup that's really bullish, but it fails, you're probably going down, right? So in this case, we had something that was bearish that immediately went, go, immediately went up, that's bullish. And we can go through that a little bit more, Amon Solo, on our next uh, on our next lesson for sure. All right. So what's happening after hours here? Spies down ten cents. Walmart's down twenty seven cents. Ooh, but that's a big big spread there. XLU's about down a penny. All right. So, all right, everybody. Well, listen, if you have any other questions, please let me know. I do really appreciate everybody coming today. Hope you're learning something. Um, hope you have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend, fun weekend. And, uh, you know, if you have some extra time on your hands, like I said, go to my website or my website. Go to, my, go to the description of this video and uh, order up one of those books. It's a good investment in time. You're definitely going to learn something. Steve Byrne has some great, great books. Being he said, the concept is the same as rejection of moving averages, RSI rejection, et cetera. XLU, XLU is rejection of a bearish V1 pattern. Exactly. Well said, Being he. Well said. I mean, essentially, I'm, I, I'm a false breakout buyer. Some people buy breakouts. I buy breakouts to the downside that fails. That's what V1s and V2s are. That's what rejections of the 200 days are. That's what rejections of the 30 RSI, false breakouts to the downside that reverse back up. So in the utility sector, you had a V1 to the downside that reversed back up. Very, very good, Bing He. Man, Bing He is spot on today. All right, so listen, two things before I go. As always, please go out and try to do something nice for somebody today. Just say hi, wave hold the door open, just be pleasant. We need a lot more of this in this world today. We're so divided and we need, uh, you know, small little acts of kindness go a long way. You really could make a huge difference in somebody's day. They might just be on the brink. They might be on the brink and you say, hey, how's it going? Hold the door. And they're like, okay, I do have faith in humanity and uh, they have a better day, right? So it's free, just something really small. It might affect their day. Oh, sorry, my phone's ringing. <laughs> so that's step one. And then step two is uh, if you haven't already and you like the podcast today, please go ahead and just hit the thumbs up button. I would really appreciate it on the way out. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I appreciate it if you could do that too. So. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Hope to see you next week. Have a great weekend and I'll look forward to talking to you then. Take care now. Bye-bye. U.S. government required disclaimer. Stock, options, futures, and forex trading is not appropriate for everyone. 
While there is a potential for large rewards, there is also a substantial risk of loss associated with trading. The material in this video or live broadcast is not geared towards any particular individual or to any particular financial situation and is not intended to meet the particular investment objectives of any viewer. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Any and all information contained in, implied, or referenced by this video or live broadcast is not to be construed as investment advice, and no representation is made that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast is an investment or financial advisor or is registered or authorized to give any financial advice. We are publishers and educators only. Therefore, the various producers of this video or live broadcast will not accept liability for any loss or damage of any kind, which may arise either directly or indirectly out of the use of any of this material, including any loss of profit no representation is made that any account or investment will or is likely to achieve the profit or losses demonstrated. We recommend consultation with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision. This video or live broadcast is not to be construed as an offer to buy or sell any security, financial instrument, or financial product of any kind. Notice is hereby given that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast or their clients may have an interest in any security, financial instrument, or financial product mentioned or referenced. Any simulated or hypothetical performance result depicted does not represent actual trading and therefore may under or overcompensate for the impact of various market factors, such as lack of liquidity. Thank you.